proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm today is Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication, for the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came upon me, I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Luke. It's the familiar story called The Road to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter to, into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This past week on Facebook, I saw a meme from the popular TV uh, show Golden Girls, and hopefully many of you know the different characters in this show. You have Sophia, who's the old mother of Dorothy, her daughter, um, and Sophia is kind of a crunchy person from uh, Sicily and has a lot of fun stories. Dorothy is kind of grouchy and impatient. And then you have the character Rose, 
who is um, kind of uh, ditzy and, and doesn't always get things all the time. And then you have Blanche, who is the more uh, sexually uh, uh, leaning towards uh, person in the crew. And so the meme goes like this. Sophia says, picture it, Sicily, 2020. I was sitting in my house. Rose asks, then what, Sophia? Sophia says, that's it. We sat in our house. It was a pandemic. And Blanche says, ooh, I bet there were a lot of babies born that year. And Rose asks, why, Blanche? Dorothy says, because there was a stork invasion, Rose. And Rose responds, a pandemic and a stork invasion? What are the chances? We have this wonderful television series of these friends sharing a house together. And the theme song for this show is Thank You For Being A Friend. Thank you for being a friend, travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift would be from me. The card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. And today, we have a group of friends walking down the road to Emmaus, and they encounter a stranger. And it isn't until they begin breaking bread together that they realize that this stranger is in fact the risen Lord in their midst. And as soon as they realize that it is their greatest friend, Jesus, he vanishes. And how often in our life do we take for granted people in our lives and, and situations? If there's one thing about this pandemic, it's, it's showed us all how important different people in our lives are. This past week, I was on a Zoom conference call with uh, my choir folk from Grace Lutheran Lancaster, and it was so nice to see all their faces and catch up with one another. And it was also very bittersweet because we had taken for granted meeting every Thursday night for choir, not really expecting that there would be a time where we can't sing together. But this is our current situation. But this distance, this physical distancing, does not dissolve the bonds of friendship. Even today, I'm having a phone call with some friends from Yale, and we're all getting together from different states and different time zones. Together, we'll be representing three different time zones, and yet we're still able to communicate with one another. And I think of our friendship with our Lord. Although he is not physically present with us, he is still a true friend, and he's still present. And he's present in every time zone. And I think back to my grandmother, uh, and something that she used to do every night. She used to sit in her bed and imagine that the Lord Jesus was in her bedroom holding her hand as she fell asleep, and she would just have a conversation with him, and she'd be like, well, Lord, my husband was a pain in the piney today, and boy, this happened today, and I fed the dogs, and I fed the turtles, and I saw the fish, and she would just talk about her day with her friend Jesus. And so we remember that God is a God of the living, and that this God can break down any barrier, and in fact, enter any time zone in any period in any distance, and be present with us, and near as a friend. And today's service, I will end by reading a hymn text um, in a little bit, just after I do our prayers, about Jesus, our friend. And so may our friend Jesus be with you this day, on the road, as he was present to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and wherever you are, and whatever journey you are on today. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of a risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially, we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationship with others, for the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this very world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace 
for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, and for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. And now the hymn. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? He came from his blessed throne, salvation to bestow. The world that was his own would not its Savior know. But, oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. Sometimes we strew his way, and his sweet praises sing, Resounding all the day, hosannas to our king. Then crucify is all our breath, and for his death we burst and cry. We cry out, we will have our dear Lord made away, a murderer to save, the prince of life to slay. Yet cheerful he to suffering goes, that he his foes from thence might free. In life, no house, no home, my Lord on earth might have. In death, no friendly tomb. But what a stranger gave. What may I say? Heaven was his home, but mine the tomb wherein he lay. Here might I stay and sing. No story so divine. Never was love, dear king. Never was grief like thine. This is my friend, in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. Don't 